Well, good morning. A little casting update. Thought I'd show you what I've got cast over the last couple of days, and I thought we'd go over the defects in these castings. And there are some definite defects in them. I've got four castings here, and um, I think they're all going to be usable castings. Now, these are all castings that are for me. They're for shop projects, so I don't have anything that would be going out to any, any customers. So, just so you understand, this is not the quality that I would send out. This is for my own shop use, and uh, they'll work well for that. So, I've got several problems. One of the primary, well, I've got two main problems. The primaries are my sand was way too wet when I molded it, and that's my fault. I knew that. We were up in the 75, 80 degree weather around here the last few days, and I, when I tempered my sand last time, why I tempered accordingly, I left it a little bit wet so that it would hold in the bin for a little bit longer. Otherwise, if it gets too hot, why they dry out really fast. I tempered it awful wet. Well, when I went to cast these, I knew, or to mold these up, I knew it was too wet, but, you know, we get anxious to do projects and, and do. So, here, day before yesterday, and it was two or three days ago that I tempered this sand. Day before yesterday, I got around and I produced two molds, and they're the uh, bearing housings for on the sand molar project. And these are my two castings. Now, these were printed with a 3D uh, pattern. There wasn't a whole lot of draft in them and there was some 3D print lines on them. So I sanded it smooth or I sanded it smoother, put a coat of shellac on them and they were acceptable. So this is a 3D printed pattern and it's got a couple of steps in it. We've got an outer rim here and then on the inside we've got a rim here. So this doesn't have a whole lot of draft. I put about oh, two and a half degrees on this I believe if I remember correctly when I uh, patterned it up and printed it out. So it's a little bit rough. And uh, we filled a few places, sanded it smoother, and then, then put a couple of coats of shellac on it. So and the way I molded it is I took, one, I took one of my standard flasks, made a follower board so that this sits between the flask, and um, then it drops in like that. So I blocked up the bottom so we didn't fall on through when we rammed it. And we rammed the, this would be the, bottom side. So this was this went into the drag. So we rammed this up, flipped it over, pulled off our follow board, and smoothed it up around the edges and everything, then went ahead and, and uh, rammed the other side of it. And we rammed the cope. And with minimum draft and a little bit of roughness on the inside here, I had a real hard time getting the first one to pull. So I got a lot of tear out in that. It actually tore the, the top off. I put some nails in it to strengthen it. And um, I knew it was rough in there, but I went ahead and poured it that way. So it's a, it's a usable casting, but it, one of them is pretty ragged looking. Plus the sand being too wet. So anyway, we got those both molded. And I poured everything yesterday afternoon. So the way these first two came out... And this is our first one and we've got a lot of roughness in it which this is from the sand being wet and a little bit of fallout here that type of thing there again these will machine out now we've got a little bit of a indent here along here and on the other one we have the same thing on the upper portion plus on this one we have some some of those same indents that's from the sand being too wet so we've got steam being released there and uh, it gave us some indents. Now, normally on the top we say that's from uh, gassing off or steaming off, something like that. And that is a little bit what it is, but it's, in this case it's caused by the sand being too wet. So it was, it was um, turning the steam and steaming off in there. Plus I didn't vent these. Um, but anyway, these are the way they came out. This is the one that had a lot of fallout in it. And we knew that. Like I say, the, the internal was had torn loose, I set it back in place and nailed it knowing I could clean it out. So I needed two of these, a top and a bottom, for the main bearing shaft on the molar. They're going to machine off fine and they're going to work just fine. Um, this here on the top, this is the little pouring basin that I made the mold for and uh, ran those up. That works really well. I'm really happy with that. I'm going to make another one for risers. So it's, it's more of just a straight riser to contain that metal shell when it's filled. We don't need a pouring basin in it, which will help me differentiate too when we put risers in. So anyway, those are the first two. Sand was too wet. Now, and there again, like I say, that's the main problems with these two castings. Now, another one that I cast at the same time was for the corn grown-up tool and cutter grinder. This is a smaller of the two base halves. And I cast this one once before, had problems with shrinkage. 
and so we've added two risers two more risers to it it filled real well same thing I still had shrinkage up in the tops here I think I'm going to use this casting I think it's going to be fine we've got plenty of mass there it's not like we're going to run out of support for our shaft going through the back piece here is solid so it's a solid uh, rail that goes in there from this side this side is the adjustment slider we split it here some guys have suggested a split cotter I'm not doing split cotters for this application and I've talked about that before I'll explain why so we've got a cap on this end that retains the shape and, and um, fits over the end I think we've got enough material here that I'm going to leave this. We'll, we'll start machining this casting once we get the other one done up anyway, and that'll take care of it. Now, in this casting, I've also got quite a bit of porosity in the top half of the mold, and that's where it filled this way from the bottom up. This one was... <laughs> these molds were moved about five times more than they should have been yesterday, all four of these molds. The reason being, it was a nasty day yesterday. Um, I ran this one up yesterday morning. And I set them out of the way because we had rain in the morning. I planned on casting in the afternoon if the weather cleared. So they came off the molding bench, got set out of the way so they didn't get rained on. Weather cleared in the afternoon. I set them back out. As soon as I got everything set up, well, it started to rain again. And it looked, the sky was clear. It looked like we were going to have a really nice late afternoon. So that's why I decided to go ahead and pour. So I had all four molds set up out in the out where they belonged, ready to pour and it started raining so everything got shifted off of my little pouring floor uh, it got moved inside everything got shifted around they got reset back on so they got moved so I had some fallout especially in this pattern so that's those are the inclusions is when we filled the mold white lifted that loose sand up there and we've got some we've got some inclusions in the top especially on this side opposite where it would have filled and, and washed to this side so Anyway, usable casting, not a perfect casting, but there again, one-off casting. I think it'll be fine. And the other mold was uh, some more flask hardware. Cast up one set of flask hardware. This is pretty well dialed in. I've got no complaints with this hardware at all. Everything looks good on it. Um, you know, this one was this one was cast, or this mold was rammed up later yesterday morning um, all morning long I left the the top off of my sand bin didn't cover my sand or anything let it dry out so it had started to dry out at least on the sand that was next to the next to the match plate when I ran this up so that's why it worked as well as it did um, there again no complaints there we're using our smaller riser to feed these to feed all of these as a matter of fact or our smaller sprues and um, I'm really happy with them you know there's nothing wrong with that pattern at all I'll continue to ram these up. I've got several more several more flask halves done. I think I've got enough for uh, two or three more flasks already done. So, and they'll take these smaller halves. So I'll have to instead of having a full set, I'll have to cast another one. So I've got two more small ones for each set of of uh, mold halves or flask halves. So, anyway, quick little update that uh, that shows some of the mistakes. You know. A lot of guys will say, oh, we had a bad pour, or you only see the good stuff. And these are these are pretty basic mistakes, really, once you figure out what your sand's supposed to be doing. And, and I was aware of what I was doing. You know, it was my fault. This casting here, I knew we had a lot of fallout in it. I should have remolded it. You know, I should have just dumped that flask and, and redone it. It's going to get set up in the lathe anyway. It's not going to be that big a deal to cut this out. So... Anyway, this is the way we poured them. You know, I left the sprues and risers attached and feeders on top so you can see the way that I fed these. Um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of information for your, for your casting bench. If you're just starting out, those are mistakes that you can avoid. You know, your sand's one of your biggest things. Right content, right amount of clay. Um, alloy makes a difference too. I, I pour a lot of reclaimed alloys. Normally for alloy, for aluminum alloys, if you can get stuff out of the scrap yard or wherever you're getting that was originally a casting it's going to cast up again real well pop cans extrusion that type of stuff they're really not worth messing with um, if I'm using reclaimed crap I don't even screw with pop cans at all but I will have what I consider a good reclaimed alloy if I'm not pouring virgin alloy if I'm pouring a reclaimed alloy depending on what it is what the thickness is and everything I will use some scrap extrusion that I have around, you know, just to utilize it. The problem with extrusion is it doesn't flow. You know, you, you don't have the characteristics of aluminum that's already been cast. It's cast, there again, different alloy, got better flowability, 
uh, designed for casting. The extrusion doesn't have those properties. So to a certain degree I will use up extrusion just by adding it into my to my good alloy or what I consider good alloy. Probably not more than one percent, you know, is what I'll I'll feed in. I figure I cast enough that I can just use up a little bit of extrusion, but it's not really worth messing with. Um, if I'm casting good alloy, usually it's a 356 here in the U.S. I don't know what the equivalent is the rest of the world, but usually it's a 356 alloy, and it casts real nice, uh, heat treatable, does real well. So that's kind of what I do here. Hopefully you can learn a little bit from it, but your sand is one of your biggies. Sand, bentonite clay, uh, I use both southern and western, you know, with, with ratios and water. Um, there again, I've got the formula for that. If somebody really wants it, I'm more than happy to share it. It's on my molding bench there, laminated there. No real rocket science there, but I do source good materials. Uh, grinding up kitty litter to make it is, I guess it works, you know, kind of a waste of time to me. I'd rather be learning to cast. So, anyway, I'm rambling. Hopefully you found something interesting there and useful for your foundry if you're getting it set up. Uh, any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And uh, if you like these, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, you can give me a thumbs down. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch, guys.